Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for investing your time with us this Thursday evening and afternoon for our Mountain Standard and Pacific Standard Time folks out there. My name is Maria Fuertes, and I am the director of the Practice Heroes Program at CareStack. We're happy for you to take part in our six series of From the Ground Up. Our goal today is that you will come away with an understanding, knowledge, and pearls of wisdom, if you will, that you can apply to be more successful in your practice. So tonight we have Sadie Tamlin as our guest speaker. She is the founder and president of On Point Business Solutions. Sadie will walk us through the challenges that we're facing in our industry today. And I know that each and every one of you that are here today, you're probably feeling it, right? And that is a shortage of team members. We are feeling the effects of the great resignation as they're calling it. I know many of our clients and colleagues are experiencing staff shortages team burnout, many more team members are stepping up to the plate and taking on a few more duties than what they're used to. That's including dental assistants, doctors and hygienists, which results in low morale and everyone's feeling overwhelmed, right? So tonight we want this to be interactive. We want you all to enter in the questions that you have for Sadie during her presentation in the chat box below. Don't forget to stick towards the end of the, of the program so we'll talk about your $25 Grubhub code. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Sadie Tamlin. Thank you, Maria. Um, thank you very much for that introduction. So just like Maria was saying, I think everybody's experienced you know, some struggles through COVID and now in the aftermath of COVID with getting good team members in, keeping the team members that you have, um, our, our business at On Point Business Solutions, we started out as, as consultants, and especially now in this post-pandemic market, we've had a lot of a lot of the doctors that we work with asking us to help with, with other things. They're like, that's great. Thanks for, for giving us advice, but we need, we need help doing these things. So um, On Point Business Solutions um, has expanded a little bit and brought in some additional experts to help in areas such as hiring, um, accounts payable, OSHA, and compliance. Um, we do a little bit of everything. We like to come in and, and help establish processes and protocol and, and build better teams. So that's kind of a little bit about, about what we do, but we're gonna jump in now to what we've seen and, and experienced and what's working well for us um, here in this post-pandemic market. So things we're gonna talk about tonight, first is finding unique ways to recruit quality employees. Then our next one, don't make a bad hire. Really important here. And processes and retention. Why onboarding is essential for a solid foundation. So a few things that, that we have found and also that doctors that we work with are doing to think outside the box. Um, the traditional post, you know, job postings on Indeed and ZipRecruiter a lot of what the feedback that we're getting from doctors and that we're seeing ourselves is that, you know, those, those kind of career assistants, they're in high demand right now. And a lot of them are asking for a pretty penny, you know, on their salary and their hourly wage. So finding some unique ways to find other talent. Um, you know, if you find a good individual that maybe has a solid foundation, otherwise a good work ethic, you can train them yourselves and not pay as much bringing them in the door. So a good place to start is develop a relationship with your local assisting schools. Um, most of the larger cities have multiple assisting or hygiene schools that you could reach out to, find a point of contact over there, a director or a teacher at the school. And a lot of times they're gonna have a good, um, good relationship with the students as well. And if you develop that relationship with them and let them know what type of employee you're looking for, they can certainly send those candidates your way. Um, uh, another great thing that we did this year, some of our, our doctors were, were really looking for staff and not getting good quality candidates off the job posting. So they joined together and hosted a job fair. Um, their vendors came together and helped host it and donate door prizes. Um, it really was a great networking event also, and they got some real unique candidates coming in, um, some from assisting schools, um, but then they also advertised on local radio stations, um, put flyers out at the malls, at the um, ball fields, those type of places, 
and it brought in a whole kind of new um, youthful type of candidate that was coming in looking for a change in career. A lot of hospitality type employees that were looking for, you know, some type of job where they could develop their their skills better, maybe make better money, have better benefits and some longevity. So Sadie, um, I need to ask you a question. Yeah. With respect to, you know, the, the team of doctors that were hosting and organizing a job fair, did they do that in a community center? Did they do it in a dental office, a larger dental office? I mean, you know, how do they do that? Because obviously there it's kind of slim pickings, right? So yeah. how do they go about that? That's right. So we have a doctor that we work with that's um, a cosmetic surgeon. So he offered up his parking lot. It was at a kind of centralized location in Atlanta and we hosted it there. And it was, it was great because of all the dentists that came, um, there wasn't really a conflict. It was kind of neutral territory. So every, everybody was happy to come and use his practice. He was looking more for um, a clerical staff. Mm-hmm. So all the assistants that were coming, it, you know, wasn't wasn't going to be a conflict at his office. So some type of neutral place. Um, you may find, like you said, a community center or something like that in in your town that would be willing to let you host it there. Um, and your reps get with your reps because a lot of reps will say, oh, you know, we have a practice that would be happy to host this, you know we'll provide food for that, or we'll provide some of the um, incentives. What we did on this job fair was um, ask candidates to pre-register and anyone who pre-registered got entered for a $500 drawing that was donated by some of the reps. And then we were able to kind of pre-qualify them for like where they lived at, what type of position they were looking for so that when they came in, we directed them only to the doctors that they were a good fit for. And it was more product, a more productive day so that they weren't kind of interviewing a lot of people that didn't really fit with their practice. Mm-hmm. I had somebody reach out to me and ask me what thoughts would be for like if they had an open house in their practice. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And having an open house, sometimes it's good to invite like other, you know, other providers in the area too, um, because they may, may be a great way to establish referral sources there as well. But a lot of times if you're having an open house and doing fun stuff, they're inviting other people and spreading the word as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you can do something interesting, you know, interesting, a few of the doctors we work with offer like Botox and cool sculpting. So Kind of having a spa party night. <laughs> yes, that, yes. That, that sounds like everybody a good event. wants to come to that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Katie, next time, let me know when your clients are having one of those. Yes, and I are flying in. <laughs> yes, absolutely. You guys are coming to the next one. Yes. Um, so, yeah, like you know, sip and spa or something like that. They those have been real popular. Gets gets people out. Um, and it kind of you know having it at somebody's office if it's a you know open house like that or a job fair. They kind of come in, they see what the, the feeling of your office is, what the flow of your office is, what kind of what your culture and feel is there. So it's a great way to, to bring in candidates and introduce them to your team. Great. Thank you. Um, for sure. And then on the topic of reps, um, you know, your vendors can be a huge resource for you. So um, spreading the word, let your vendors know that you're looking for, for staff. Um, they're in a lot of offices and they may be in offices that aren't, you know, in direct competition with your practice. So they get to know those employees, managers and doctors really well and and know if someone's looking for something different. Um, and it could just be that, um, you know, employees driving really far, but your office would be a lot closer. So, um, you know, it may not be that you're taking an employee, but the, the reps can tell you what type of employee that that person is also and give you some recommendations there if they know that you're looking. Um, Just remember not to purposely poach employees from your colleagues and referral sources. Um, Be careful there, but um, if their office isn't a great fit a lot of times and, you know, they know it's been a far drive or something like that, um, or they can't work this, the hours and you have different hours, whatever, um, may be a great way to to find staff there. Another thing that one of the doctors we work with gave us um, this great idea, and it's worked really well for him, is weeding out some some tire kickers. If you are posting traditionally on like ZipRecruiter or Indeed, 
um, everyone knows that you get all these resumes and how much time it takes to go through all of them and sift through like, what's the best candidate? Which one do I want to bring in for an interview? Um, so set up a little test in your posting and put it at the end and just ask them to send you a little note, make it something silly, like send me a message, let me know you're interested in the job and in the subject line, put your favorite color. Um, and then you can also ask them a few questions about, you know, what they're looking for in a position, that type of thing. But you'd be surprised how many people don't read all the way through your ad. Um, so especially with the unemployment, you know, incentives going on right now and a lot of a lot of people out there just applying, applying, applying. Um, that can help you not waste your time going through all of those resumes. I mean, I've heard that where, you know, they're going through the traditional, let's say, Indeed or you know, I forgot the other ad um, company, but like people are not even showing up. Oh, the- absolutely. Yeah, right. that's right. Um, we this, had, um, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. We had someone tell us the other day that um, someone did, did show up for um, the interview and they were, you know, this office was really short staffed and they were ready to offer them the job. And the person was like, no, I just need you to sign off on my, you know, that I came and interviewed. Like he almost got confrontational because he was like, I don't want a job. <laughs> you know, I just wanted to come interview. Didn't take this back to the unemployment office. Um, so that's, that's absolutely right. There's a lot of that going on right now. Is it, and is it easy to set up those tests in Indeed? Like- yes, it is. So Indeed, most of those um, hiring sites will let you set up um, tests within the, you know, within the software or their app. Um, like, um, some indeed, I think will definitely let you even make, own, make your own questions in there and see what the candidates answer. So that would be a way to weed through them. But then just in the text of your job posting where your description is at the, you know, very bottom at the end of your description, put your own test in, and then that can show you who actually read through the whole entire post. Got it. So. Let's get a good laugh out of it. Ask people to send their favorite meme or like favorite TikTok, you know, get a good laugh out of it. If I'm, if we're going to go through all these resumes, I might as well get a good chuckle. Yeah. Make, you know, it makes you stand out too. You know, if you're an applicant and you're really seriously looking for a job and it, you know, a career and the the type of practice matters to you, something like that is going to make you stand out a little bit from everybody else. So Hey, to all of our attendees, feel free to send me your favorite meme or TikTok. I'm here for a good laugh. <laughs> we'll start that now. I have nothing but free time after this, so I'm here for a good laugh. <laughs> oh. um, our, our next topic about, um, you know, hiring besides finding really unique ways to bring people in the door, um, more importantly, is what we do when we're, when we're going through the process of finding that perfect teammate for our, for our practice. Um, don't make a bad hire. Um, the cost of a bad hire, let's talk about that. So um, the United States Department of Labor estimates that the monetary cost of making a bad hire is 30% of the annual wage of your average employee. So if you talk about an $18 an hour employee that works 40 hours a week, 52 years, 52 weeks a year, um, at 37, around $37,000 a year, 30% of that is $11,000. That's a huge cost um, for hiring someone that you're then gonna have to discipline out if you really think about it in dollars and cents there. Um, You know, all the time and energy that you spend bringing them in and then training them, and then that you're gonna have to put into going through the correct process to get them back out of the door. Um, Your team's morale, um, you know, we all know that one bad apple in there can bring your whole entire team down. Um, You could possibly even lose employees over it. So um, really think about putting the resources into, in the beginning, making sure that you have the right, right person. So with that being said though, Sadie, I can tell you this, I'm just gonna be playing devil's advocate because I see this happening now. Well you're shorthanded, you're shorthanded, especially in the clinical um, department, right? And you can't afford to, to be one down a, a dental assistant per se. Somebody comes walking in, they've got 10 years of experience. 
I mean, I've seen it where we have like a, um, a knee jerk reaction by hiring that person because it's been 10 years and I feel like I don't need to train that person. But what happens is that that 10 years of perhaps bad habits or bad behavior is what you're is what you're also hiring if you don't do your due diligence. Right. That's right. Absolutely. And that's where, you know, I think being creative in hiring right now, especially um, with the, the high rate that a lot of these these seasoned assistants are asking for, you know, thinking about is that that important or can I spend a little bit more time and train someone who doesn't have that skill set, but who's a really good, you know, has a big, great work ethic and good customer service. Um, looking at those types of employees is very hard, like you said, when you're short staffed to not make that knee jerk reaction. Um, but it's so worth waiting or spending a little bit more time in your hiring and training process. And, you know, kind of molding someone into a, a dental assistant or a hygiene assistant, front desk, whatever your need may be, um, that maybe doesn't have that seasoned skill set. Um, but, you know, Chick-fil-A, we love getting people from Chick-fil-A that just have great customer service, Starbucks, you know, some of those hospitality um, employees coming over into the dental field can be great hires. Several of my Starbucks. best hires came from Starbucks. Two of them came from Starbucks, best financial coordinators, AR person, and my best yeah. desk uh, treatment coordinators were like waitresses at a restaurant and um, somebody else in retail. So yeah, I mean, they're, they they want to learn and they and they're they've got the customer service skills already. It's innate. That's right. Yep. They come in, you know, someone else, Starbucks or you know, Chick-fil-A, Hilton, like all of those have great training programs and because you know they were they mandate great customer service so um if you do get some employees from there you can train them on the skill set but you're absolutely right they have a good good work ethic to start with um and you know maybe think about ways to get through those you know short staff days um of course there's temp agencies but we we know the cost of those is pretty high also but look at some of your your local providers and colleagues um referral sources and other practices do they happen to be closed on certain days when you're open and need staff you know maybe you could could share some staff that way um, without paying the temp agency cost um, some creative staffing could help you get through those times and really wait to find the right fit that is creative sharing sharing um you know team members if you will even though you're yep you're not absolutely and you'd be surprised um you know how many local providers may be up for that because you may be able to help them out when they need it mm -hmm. um so um okay so talking about you know just how to not make a bad hire a few little suggestions here um phone interviews i feel like we've all gotten pretty comfortable with these through covid because that was how we all now conduct business and you know one way or another is over the phone or webex so um Interviews are still a good idea. I think it can help you um, have an informal way to, you know, introduce yourself to the to the candidate. Um, weed out some people that, as soon as you talk to them, you know you've got some red flags, and you know you don't need to waste the time bringing them in and spending resources on an in-person interview. Um, you can go ahead and get some stuff out of the way, find out if it's even going to be a fit. Um, you know what their salary or benefit requirements are, what type of hours, you know letting them know what the office requirements are and if it's even going to be a fit for them before you move forward to the next next step in the process. Um, documenting the interview, you know, make sure you write down um, what, your, what your interview went like, the questions you asked, what you discussed with the candidate so that when you, if you are moving forward to the in-person interview and um, whether it's you or someone else, you could pass off what you've already discussed. You know, sometimes we forget even if we're the same one interviewing them again um, that we've already talked about certain things. So it allows you, you know, to be able to review what you went over in the phone interview. Um, and also you may ask some of the same questions again and find out if they answer them the same way. So real important to document that, that interview. Also, I think it's also good to find the personality. Uh, they, if, if you're, let's say, hiring for the front desk or even the clinical staff, right, having that personality that caring personality that comes through the phone if they're going to pick up the phone and say hi sadie nice to meet you over the phone right you know that they, hi nicole 
nice to meet you, you know, or absolutely. Or, thanks for calling great smiles, you know? Yeah. So. And, um, I don't know how many, um, times, you know, if they don't know exactly, you know, that it's you, if it's like a few minutes off or something and they answer the phone, cause they don't know your number and they're just like, Hello, you know, and it's like, okay, we know right now. And then as soon as they realize that this is the interview, they pep right up and it's like, okay, there was my red flag. I know that's how you're going to answer the phone when you're not prompt, you know, right. or know that you're, if that's what you kind of resort to, that tells you your personality. Um, so I think establishing uh, if there's a fit, we had a client, Maria, you were on the call just yesterday. She goes, I have our meetings for the next year planned out till 2023. She has every team meeting, every event. It was quite incredible. She yeah. showed us a, camp, a piece of paper and she said, I show it to everyone that's interviewing because right away, Billy, I'll tell by their face if they're t- intimidated or scared by my yeah. calendar, my schedule. To me, it was the most beautiful thing because, you know, yeah. OCD over here, it was incredible. I loved everything about it, but I could see where someone would be like, nope. And their face, she's like, their face tells it all. And then we don't come yeah. back after that. Yeah, that's, you know, I think those are little tools that you kind of, you know, figure out to use. Like this is something that's important to me or to our practice. Um, we don't, you know, waver on those type of standards when you hire. Um, it's a lot of times hard to do, but um, definitely good to stand your ground on those, those things. Oh, absolutely. Um, a uh, few things here in between the phone interview and in-person interview that I wanted to mention. Um, right now, uh, everyone knows how how quickly some of these good candidates are being snatched up. So it may be a good idea if you're going to get um, references or give the um, you know interviewee any type of disc or aptitude test to go ahead and and do those now, so that you kind of have an idea to keep moving forward with the with the candidate right you know as quickly as possible because um we've had a lot of doctors saying golly we couldn't even by the time we got them back in for an interview in person and then got all the references they had found another job Mm -hmm. so um if you really like them on the phone go ahead and get some of those things in the works for sure um when you do bring them in for an in-person interview a few little tips here um Bring in quality over quantity, you know, same thing. We threw them in your, in, in your phone interview and just bring in the best quantities, the best candidates um, and spend quality time with them. Make sure that you schedule them on a time when, when, you know, you as the doctor or your practice manager has a lot of time to spend and really find out what that, what that employee is going to be like, you know, what some of their, their values are. Let, let them talk to you about what they're looking for. Um, in a job and, you know, some of the challenges they faced prior to in other employee, you know, in other employment situations, that type of thing. Um, it's not, it's kind of a waste of time, everyone's time. If you're not available and have someone else on your team interview them, that's really not great at, you know, judging the type of employee this would be, you know, like your front desk person or something. Don't say, oh gosh, I don't have time today. Let me just let someone else interview them. Um, reschedule and have them come back because I think that's where you get down the road of possibly making a bad hire. Um, again, give a disc or aptitude test. We have, we love the Wonderlick test. We have an old version of that and it's um, pretty analytical, especially for front desk or manager type candidates. Um, you know, if someone doesn't score real high on it, a lot of times they're going to have a harder time um, you know, verify on insurance, work in your AR, um, calculate balances for patients, that type of thing. So, um, you know, someone could score a little bit lower and still be good in the clinical area, but it kind of tells you if someone's applying for a more administrative role, whether they would be a good fit for that role or not. Are these um, eight Sadie, or does the, uh, the doctor or the manager have to create an account? Oh, okay. So the first two, you may have to create an account. One, two, three test has a lot of free tests in there. Um, we also have a disc test that we could send out and we could send out um, one of the Wonderlick tests that, that we utilize as well, if anybody's interested. Right. And with respect to your services, do you find that there's an uptick in, in doctors, you know, needing your services because of shortage, shortages in staffing? 
Yeah, absolutely. We um, originally didn't do a lot of staffing and, and HR stuff um, and have kind of been driven in that area because everybody is in, in such need of staff. So, um, you know, some of, some of us, actually, some of our team members will go out and fill positions right now for some of the doctors we work with just because they're in such dire needs. So we have definitely um, been pushed in that direction because of how short staffed everybody is. Um, and I don't know how many times, um, you know, here recently I'll walk into an office and see a, a doctor taking x-rays and, you know, doing their own treatment plan, you know, sitting down and entering treatment plans and um, running sterilization because they just don't have staff. So everybody is, is pulled real thin. Um, okay, so I just got a question here, Malisha. How do I make a killer awesome job posting? Okay, so I think, you know, be real, you know, be as creative as possible, but really talk about and highlight what's great about your practice. You know, you want to make your practice stand out. So, um, Maria, I know we talked before too about, you know, sign bonuses. Um, Stuff, stuff that's monetary and um, incentivized like that, everybody is doing right now. So I, I think there's a, a benefit to doing that to attract employees, but I think what really attracts people, good quality candidates is gonna be, you know, your culture. Do you have a great culture in your practice? So create a job posting that talks about the culture and the environment in your practice and what makes it a good, good place to work. And I think that's the best job posting that you can, can create. Um, Thanks for that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, disc profiles, we talk a little bit here about, um, it, you know, this is a great thing to do for potential candidates, but also within your office for yourself or your staff, um, finding out how everybody ticks and, and why maybe, everybody can kind of deal with their team members a lot better if they know, oh gosh, that's why this person did this. You know, someone who's a, a strong C personality always wants to make sure things are done the right way. Whereas someone who's a strong I personality always wants to make sure that things are done the fun way. So, you know, there could definitely be a disconnect there um, until you figure out why everyone ticks the way that they do. And maybe perhaps a, a way for us to communicate to each other, knowing the fact that an I personality, I may look at them at this is their personality and I may then approach them in a different way. Absolutely, that's right. And I think, um, you know, and until you do, I, I've seen a lot of instances where teams have done the disc profile on everybody. And then afterwards they come back and they say, oh my goodness, like this thing that Sally does every day used to bother me so much, but now I know why she does it, I understand. And, you know, it's okay. You know, it's, I think when you have a perspective from someone else's view, it helps you get through, um, get through your days and get through those types of challenges easier. Mm -hmm. um, uh, a few more uh, interview points here. Um, if you're hiring for a bilingual position, when you bring that person in for your interview, it may be good to have someone, if you have someone on your staff that is bilingual, that can speak with them and just make sure that they're fully you know, fluent in the language that you need them to be in, maybe have them read or write also um, as an additional interview point. Um, when you're talking, when you're interviewing, I know a lot of people ask about this also, like what can I say or not say? Um, if you just, you really stay specific and concentrate on, are you qualified for the job? You know, here's what the job requirements are. Here's what the job description is. This is what we're looking for in a candidate. Do you meet, you know, these type of things? Um, and don't talk about age, race, gender, marital status. Are you pregnant? Um, sexual orientation, any of those things. Just stay completely away from it. Um, ask some open-ended questions like what motivates you? And, you know, let, let the candidate talk you know, about themselves. And a lot of times they, they may answer those questions um, on their own, but uh, let them do a lot of, a lot of talking. When you do ask questions, be very specific there. So I got another question from Alicia. Is Indeed the best place to post a job ad? 
So this is the feedback that we've been getting most recently. Um, we do have a few doctors that are using Indeed. Um, and I feel like the ones that are using Indeed are getting inundated with um, a lot of resumes that they're going through, but they are getting good quality candidates. Um, I think uh, Zip Recruiter, um, Mighty Recruiter, a lot of these are about the same type of quality candidates that you're receiving as Indeed. Um, the ones that we have using Dental Post right now are not getting as good results. They're only getting a few candidates. Um, so the feedback that we have been getting right now is that everybody's getting the best um, best results off of it. Indeed, ZipRecruiter, um, those real popular sites. So um, yes, that's that's what we've been finding so far. And no um, you can do some other creative stuff like LinkedIn. A lot of people have LinkedIn um, uh, profiles now. You know, dental assistants, uh, techs, hygienists. Um, a lot of people have those profiles and are looking on LinkedIn for employment opportunities. So um, you can pay for a paid posting on LinkedIn that will boost boost that and spread that out to um, those type of candidates as well. And we've got have a lot of people giving us feedback that they're getting um, great results off of that as well. In addition to to those, um, have you seen your clients also post uh, like on their social media pages? Yeah, a lot of people are posting on social media. Um, I think social media is hit or miss. It depends on uh, your follower base. You know, if you have, you know, mainly patients, it, it just depends on kind of what your demographic is. We've had some people getting a really good result off of social media and then some that are like, I don't get, you know, I post a lot on social media for employment opportunities and really don't get much. So I think it, it depends on how far reaching your social media followers are. And how about referral based, um, um, what's it called? Like, you know, oh, like I refer mm -hmm. somebody to the, to the company and I get X amount, you know? Yeah, I think referral based, um, you know, like kickbacks or whatever, you know, like a referral based bonus or incentive um, is great because um, a lot of times we see that the referral based candidates tend to be the ones that have the most longevity end up being the best employees for a team. Um, so I think, you know, that if you have someone that is telling you, hey, I've got someone that would be a great fit for you those are ones to really take some time and, and interview and see if they'd be a good fit for your practice. So I have a question that's kind of off topic, but on the same time, it's kind of on topic because we're talking about interviewing and hiring people. And you were talking about social media at the same time. So let's say if I were to apply for a job, what percentage of like millennials, Gen Zs, do you think are going to look at social media to see like, are they engaging in things around the community. What do they do? Are they a fun group to be around? Cause I mean, that's like the first thing my, my age group is really going to look at. I, that's the thing I do. I'm like, Oh, when I look up a practice where we're going to like, Oh, what do they do? What kind of outreach? Yeah. What do their employees do for fun? Cause I, I like to know those things. Absolutely. I think that kind of goes back to like Alicia's question of like, how do I make my job posting, um, you know, real attractive to the candidates that are looking at it. And I think it is really important to say who you are. Like, um, be creative in there and say, you know, this is what we what we do. This is why we're a great team. Um, this is how we participate in the community. And um, it is kind of a tangent, but on the marketing side, that is what social media, like you said, the millennials and um, it, it's where everybody goes to for um, referrals to anything. We had um, a doctor that did a TikTok video that was like, and it was crazy. It had nothing to do with dentistry. It was just like them dancing in their office and they're getting patients from all around the world coming to their practice now. Like it, it's just crazy, you know, and it, by chance refined dentistry. <laughs> <laughs> no. There's a TikTok account that I follow. And yes, I am guilty. I am an active TikTok user, not a TikTok maker, a TikTok user, because I like to be entertained. And there's a group called, it's a dental practice for fine dentistry. So shout out to them if they ever see this video. They have like a million followers. Yeah. And it doesn't have to do with dental, but I think it's so fun to see that 
they're making videos and hanging out as a team. It's very intriguing and I love to see it. Yeah. Yep. And that's what um, this one dentist does. Like he shows, like he brings stuff into his staff um, in the mornings, like coffee and does a little dance. Like it's just fun. It makes them like relatable too, I think. Um, Especially for a candidate that's looking for this as a career choice. Um, So to the CareSac bosses and management, when we all meet in the office again, Marie and I are fully expecting coffee and donuts yeah, yeah. and bagels. <laughs> That's a friendly reminder, though. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, so on to our next section, which um, is my favorite. Like I just mentioned, we kind of have um, gotten pulled into the staffing uh, side of our, our company, but what... Um, what our team really enjoys the most um, in helping practices grow and, and be better is the process and retention part, building a strong team, putting processes in place. Um, you know, the first thing we normally say when we come in and start talking to the doctors and managers is, you know, sit down. Because normally they come to us and they say, you know, like, how do, how do we make our team stronger? How do we train better? Um, my day is crazy. How do I make my days better and more efficient? Um, and it's like, you know, you have control to do this. Sit down and think about, like, what is my ideal day? You know, what do I want my ideal, what do I want my ideal day to look like? And then um, let's look at how we get there and repeat it every time. So put those processes in place and that can happen. Um, a few tips here for, for starting to do that is make sure all your staff's in the best position for them. Um, this is something that we see all the time is, you know, there may be a staff member that, that a manager says, you know, you know, Cindy just every day, she's late, she doesn't do her stuff, she's always, you know, slow and behind. And then when you sit down and try and, and do some coaching with Cindy, Cindy's like, oh yeah, well, I really don't like treatment planning. I've wanted to do, you know, front desk forever or whatever. Um, and no one's given me a chance to do it. And then you move Cindy into that position and she shines at the front desk. So, um, you know, that's not always the case, but a lot of times there could be that that person's not in the right fit for them. There may be a better fit in the office for them. Um, we like to encourage, uh, you know, doctors and managers to sit down with their staff, um, it's hard right now because I know everyone's short on time and resources, but monthly is great. If you can do it quarterly, um, sit down with your staff for a one-on-one, talk to them about how they, how they think their jobs go and how they feel about, you know, their, their part of the, you know, them being part of the team and what they contribute and where they think their strengths and weaknesses are. And then share the same thing with them for, you know, from a management perspective, how you think they're doing so that it's never a surprise when you come to them and say, you're not doing a great job, have it be a real open forum. Um, and, you know, a lot of times we do annual reviews for those of you that do the annual reviews and you talk about, you know, goals and growth, and then it never gets talked about again until the next year. That's, that's kind of just how it happens because we get busy. Um, so if you put time on your calendar to talk to those those staff members in between those annual reviews, it helps keep everybody moving in the right direction. Um, creating a great environment, um, ways to be positive and fun. You know, you still want to have some some expectations and some protocol in place, but make it interactive and um, have your staff interact with the patients. Do huddles where you talk about your patients from the prior day. Say, you know, who had a great patient yesterday? Let's talk about them. Let's send them a note. Hey. Mr. Jones, we know you're so excited to get those new veneers because you're about to have a big presentation coming up. Um, You know, send them a note. We all have um, practice management software where we can send out some communication. So let give that patient a shout out and have your staff all, you know, kind of participate in that. And if they know you're going to do those type of things and huddles and meetings, a lot of times they're going to be more interactive with your patients um, throughout their workday. So that's a great way to make your environment fun. Um, Set clear expectations and communicate those to your staff. Um, Make sure that they know what's expected of them. If you get frustrated with your assistant because she's never never ready and never has everything together for you when you sit down and do a crown, um, you know, make sure that you've laid out for her what instruments, what material you want. You know, you need to have have a manual or process for that. 
make sure that the staff has that, signs off on, on it and knows that that's what's expected. And then when they don't do it, now you can hold them accountable. So a lot of times that's that's what we see is that, um, you know, it's hard to take that initial time to set those processes and put them in place, but your, your staff and team work so much better once you do. Um, making your staff feel vested, this is a real big one. And I know it's hard um, for a lot of doctors to share like revenue and production goals. So if, if you're not comfortable with sharing those type of numbers, um, have other numbers like, you know, new patient numbers or conversion rates, other KPIs that you can share with your staff and set goals around monthly or quarterly so that every morning in the huddle you talk about where you're at. Are you meeting those goals? Are you not meeting your goals? Um, some great things that the staff can do, have, let them come up with ideas too. What can we do to, to hit our new patient goal for this month? Do we need to get out and do more marketing? Um, that type of thing. Ask for better reviews. Ask for our patients to refer a friend. Those type of things. And once your staff starts feeling vested, they're, they're all working for the, you know, feel like they're working for the same cause of your practice. They're going to, you're going to see a difference for sure. Right. I think it's important to keep the morale up. And I think as leaders too, it's, it's important that we, we do our best in rallying the team. Um, you know, I knew of a group that actually did some gratitude exercises, if you will, um, where they actually wrote letters to each other. I'm not saying that everybody does this, but it actually worked for them because they were feeling the burnout. Everybody was yeah. stepping to the plate, doing more duties and in different positions. And so, you know, the doctor decided to take them out as well, like have a, have an outing. Um, and then also have a form of gratitude to each other, just an act of kindness, because yeah, we're always about the patient, but it's also, we have to take, think back and also think about ourselves as a, as a team and the staff. And yeah. it's good to support each other through that. And by the way, I, I you know, was listening to you about um, the doctor and the an assistant that perhaps does, just doesn't get it with respect to um, what to have out uh, prepared for, you know, for whatever procedure. I knew of also a group that actually took pictures of yes. setup because they had a lot of temps coming through and, yeah. and it was hard for them to train people. So, you know, having that was, was very um, important. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of um, the practices that we work with, their manuals, they have, pic, you know, it's like a pictogram through there for their assisting manual. So they know like, you know, here's what we use when we do an impression. Here's what we use when we do a crown prep. Um, you know, here's a surgical setup and this is what we want every time. There's no, you know, gray area there. Um, but yeah, to your point also, I think staff outings are great. You know, we, we tend to think of incentivizing with money. And I think a lot of times um, there are other things that staff value more than money. And you're absolutely right. A cohesive team and a positive work environment is, and feeling valued is more important to most individuals than money. You know, um, if you really start surveying um, employees and doing exit interviews, a, a lot of the reason why they leave is not over money, but over feeling valued and feeling like, you know, they are, are a piece of, a part of a greater picture on a team. Um, one of the, the doctors we know would do um, like monthly contests that were just kind of like you were talking about. Um, everybody would write, you know, anytime they had a positive experience with a team member, like, you know, so-and-so helped me today, but they took my patient when I already had two patients and knew that I was behind. They took out the trash, even though it's my side job, you know, they would put little notes in there. And then at the end of the month, whoever had the most positive feedback from team members um, got like to park close to the building or something like that. So creative ways to recognize the employee, those employees that are going be above and beyond to be a great team member it's really good way to go um okay a few notes here on just some legality stuff on onboarding documents um make sure that you're following guidelines when you do onboard staff um if you're using an accounting firm they should be able to guide you in this direction also um we normally encourage practices to use like a payroll system because they handle a lot of this stuff for you and they are able to stay up to date on any guidelines um, that you need to be aware of and will normally take care of it all for you. They'll send everything to the employee and get them onboarded. 
for you. So it takes some of that headache off of your, your shoulders. Um, be aware of the position that you're hiring for. Set some standards around what you want those staff members to, to have when you onboard them. For example, if it's a dental assistant that's gonna be performing sedations, you probably wanna make sure they have a current CPR certification. Um, if you're bringing on doctors that are gonna perform sedation, what type of standards do you want? Do you want them to be PAL certified? Um, of course, ACLS, those type of things. Um, making a little, you know, a little sheet for onboarding saying like this position, here are the requirements for this, this person when we onboard them. We need to have all of these documents in place and any licenses that they need need to be up to date and current before they start. Um, immunizations, you know, here's a little link right here for the, to the CDC so you can see some of their recommendations on immunization standards for um, medical and dental practices. Um, COVID change changes by the minute, um, definitely by the day. So check with your, your state, state guidelines there on any type of COVID mandates, especially if you're accepting um, Medicaid or Medicare patients. Um, also for Medicaid or Medicare patients, uh, check with um, your state department of community health because they may, you, you probably have to check their exclusion list, especially if you're onboarding providers. Um, they want to make sure that you're not hiring someone who uh, has ever committed fraud or um, been abusive in the Medicaid or Medicare system before. So most states have some type of requirement for that. So just be aware of that as well. Um, have a plan when you hire staff. Um, you know, Maria, you mentioned it earlier, but it's, we get busy and it's like, okay, you can just shout it out. Just come on in. We just need a warm body right now, you know. Throw you, throw you to the wolves. Yeah, exactly. So it's talking about starting with a good foundation. If you have a plan in place um, for when you hire that person, are they going to sit down and go through manuals for the first couple days and really get to understand the position and what's required of them and then, um, and then go into a training type program where a staff member is able to set aside dedicated time with them and go through training. And then after that, they move into a, a shadowing position. And then after that, once they can be checked off, they move into their position, you know, fully. Um, that, of course, is the most ideal type of training program. We can't always do that. But some, some version of it where there is a, some structure normally creates the strongest, um, the strongest employees. The, uh, the practices that we see that have, you know, the happiest providers and retain their, their associates for the longest time are the ones that have a really strong training program in place. And those doctors normally say, like, you know, we, lo we, we love this practice because our, traf our staff is so highly trained and they make my day easier. So the better your training program, um, the better ultimately your, your day will be because you have a lot greater efficiencies. Um, set the staff up for success, having those documents in place, job descriptions um, of what the job is, manuals that really detail what you want out of that position and what they're required to do um, it is very important. Um, you know, for example, new patients, you, you want to have a, a new patient script. That's something that is probably one of the most important conversations with your patients in the life of, the, of your practice. So making sure that a staff member that's going to engage in conversation with a new patient talks about everything and gives them all the information that you want them to have for your practice. Um, and, and Sadie, you have that type of information. If, if anybody in our audience wants to reach out to you, you can, you can definitely sit down with them and, and, and go through their needs, correct? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. We have a, a lot of that and we're happy to help um, anybody develop some of those processes. Mm -hmm. um, checklist, have a checklist so that when you do hire employees, you can check them off in that position um, and then reviews like we were talking about before. Have a, have a review process and a review document so that um, at 30 days you can talk to them about how they're doing. Um, you know, be realistic. It doesn't, doesn't help to sugarcoat it. If someone's not doing well, set, set expectations and standards and say, and a timeline around it. So we're going to review you again in 30 days. And if these expectations haven't been met, here's what the consequences are. Um, and then stick to them for sure. 
um, little example, we have a just a quick little um, sample from like a checklist. Um, this is for a front desk position, things that you want, you know, this employee to do every time in your office, um, communicate well with patients, be able to multitask, take pride in the appearance of their workspace, always be cheerful and upbeat, um, particularly when interacting with patients. Um, answer the phone within three three rings. You know, some of this seems silly, but um, it's stuff that can be very important for that front desk position. And um, when you share those expectations with the staff and they execute them, it, it really makes for um, a great addition to your team. Most definitely. Um, okay, so that's about what we had just to summarize. A um, few ways to get through this, this crazy post-pandemic market right now is find some creative and unique ways to recruit quality employees, um, work with providers in your area um, and vendors, assisting schools, and you don't always have to, you know, bring in that really highly paid assistant that's been in the, in the industry for a long time. Find someone that's got great work ethic maybe from Starbucks or Chick-fil-A <laughs> and uh, train them train them your way. Take the time to do that. Avoid making a bad hire. It's very costly to do that. Really put your resources into the, the interview process, check-in references, making sure you're making the, the correct hire for someone that's going to be a fit with your team. Um, and then making sure you have strong processes and create a good foundation for those those employees as they're coming in, it's going to give you a lot longer retention, um, create that great positive work environment in your practice. Um, partnering with local providers, let them help you out when you're short staffed if possible. Um, and, you know, if you have to use a temp agency, but hold off making that, that, that quick knee jerk reaction move. Um, and then Maria, I know you're going to talk a little bit about um, the next uh, from the ground up. Yeah, if you can get to that slide, that'd be great. Yeah, because topic, that, but, yeah, that's that's a hot topic as well. So the great resignation yeah. is a hot topic and our next um, from the ground up series. So if you have that last slide, but one thing I want to say again is like, you know, you creating the morale, right? That's important to elevate our team um, as well and um, ensuring the fact that you, you build a foundation. So you've got to give the person that you're hiring a roadmap, if you will, because that's setting them up for success, right? Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, so I, I was hoping that we'd keep it, keep it on, your, on your spot, but this is what's going to happen next, next oh, month, folks. <laughs> yeah, so I want to make sure that people get a hold of you because like I said, I know that there's an uptick of providers and, and, and you know, companies out there that are going out to people like you, Sadie. And your team, right? They yeah. need help because and that's a few things they don't want to do yeah, when they're short. They don't have the bandwidth. That's right. When they're short staff and they don't have the bandwidth, they're outsourcing a few things. Um, right. Like, you know, some of the things that that we're doing and other companies are doing is maybe taking phone calls for practices. So you don't have to have as many people at your front desk until you hire that perfect person. Um, following up on social media or Google leads. Um, so go to your, checking your, to that. To that page, that slide where we they they can they know how to get a hold of you, and then we can go back to the oh, yeah. problem. There you go. There's this is how you get a hold of Sadie, folks. So there's her this phone. Number. You... Yep. And and what is yeah. your? Because I don't have my readers on. See so if you want to let me know your your website. Yeah, you can check our our website out. It's um, www.dentalops.net. Okay, that's so. This is how you can get a hold of Sadie. And then you just go to the next slide with, we're going to talk about dispelling the myth of virtual assistance. I'm going to tell you right now, I mean, because of the great resignation, people are going to Sadie, but also there's a lot of us that's going to, to VA and we've got Medina, Melissa and Christina, all a lot of these great classy gals that's going to talk to us about what they provide for the dental industry out there. So that's going to be our next from the ground up Thursday, January 13th at 7 p.m. EST. So um, make sure you you all watch out for that. And then I'm going to take it to Nicole to end to end our, our to conclude our night. And I have the fun job because I get to give away the Grubhub gift card. So thank you, Sadie Maria, for being with us.